Hello everybody, Jose Rodriguez here. It's a new week. We had a very good live stream last night without any glitches. I was ecstatic that it worked out that well. What I'm going to be doing from now on is spending a day and a half or so creating all my content for the following week. And basically what will happen is it will be then uploaded all at once and each video will be then released at a specific time. In this case it will be more than likely 4 o'clock p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So be expecting a video just about every day. I'm not going to say every day because some days I might not be able to do that. So I covered a bunch of topics during the live stream. In case you did not see it yet, it is ready to be viewed right now. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make individual videos where I will then cover in hopefully more concise detail what the subjects of all of these topics were and each will be devoted to one single video so one of the big things that people just are absolutely still confused about and again the reason that there is no concise answer to many printing questions is because there is no concise answer so you will always get a vague answer because there are many ways to do this or that depending on what you want, depending on what you're willing to do. There's many ways to approach refilling. There's many ways to approach um, color management. Yes, there is. And so in this case, people are having trouble basically remembering or, or figuring out or understanding whether they really have to flush there are CLI 42 cartridges for the Pro 100. Why do we worry about that? Because everybody wants to refill. Nobody wants to use OEM inks like they should be. Okay, yeah. Surprise, surprise. It costs $16 per cartridge for that eight cartridge printer. You didn't know that when you bought it, right? You got that great rebate price. Net may have been $50 to $100. Okay, and now you got to realize that, oh my gosh, I got to spend as much as I spent on the printer net to refill it with OEM inks. Well, that's the way it is. Printing is not cheap, but we can make it cheap, meaning low cost, not cheap in quality, but low cost by choosing the right ink and the right approach. And there are several. There's not going to be just one single one. Okay, I'm going to give you various choices please if you're the first time viewer of any of my videos go back and examine cli 42 playlists on my channel there are over 60 playlists folks make it easy on yourself i've covered just about everything there is to be covered okay in this subject the general subject of photo printing several printer models and all of the hacks that we perform to make our life easier printing wise and lower our costs so the question is yes i'm going to go ahead and refill my original cartridges do i have to flush them if you choose to yeah you don't have to flush them but if you if you don't then you know you may end up with a sponge that's not entirely white well let's get into that so i'm going to show you various cartridges here they're all cli 42s except for one a cli 8 so here we have an oem yellow cartridge that i used as part of an eight cartridge set to do my testing when precision colors finally release their signature edition except for the pro 100 so in order for me to know hey how good are these inks really wink wink are they going to really perform as great as he's hoping well I had to install, I'm a third party tester. I am not holding Precision Color's hand. Okay, they provided me with the inks and I went ahead and performed the tests as unbiasedly as possible. So I loaded OEM inks on my Pro 100, ran two complete cleaning cycles, okay? I want you guys to take a very good look, okay? And then furthermore, I went ahead and printed about seven nine by 12 prints they did have a border, so the image size is not quite that big. But anyway, about seven prints of seven different images, including the standard image. That was my evaluation. 
And as you can see, hardly any of the ink was used. Most of the ink that was used resided in the sponge. As you see, no ink from the reservoir was basically used. It's right at the top. So it took very little yellow ink at least. So this is untampered. This is brand new. I'm not going to do anything to it until I am down to maybe empty condition. And then I can go ahead and process this cartridge. By the way, if you are worried about flushing, this is the only one you would flush. Okay. Oh, what about any kind of physical reaction between remaining OEM ink and the so-called Precision Color Signature Edition ink? None. Okay. There is no recorded physical reaction between the two inks coming together. What about color changes? Well, go back and view my test videos on that subject. That will answer your question. Okay. So let's just talk about flushing. What if you insist on flushing your cartridges? And then at the end of this, after I have scared you enough, you may want to take the easy way out and I'll, I'll show you what that is. So here is another OEM cartridge that has been already used once. After that, I flushed it and I refilled it with Precision Colors inks and I used it. And right now I'm about yellow. Okay. Not yet. I can go ahead and reset this and top it off and I'm good to go. It's like starting with a brand new full cartridge. This is a CLI-8, okay? The reason we can use CLI-8 cartridges is because the bodies are identical to CLI-42s. That's basically all they did. They used the same body, the same design, and just simply used a different chip, a chip with different coating. The chip is identical shape-wise and look-wise, but it's coated differently. So you could take these, and swap the chips from the OEM cartridge as long as the color matches. Boom. In fact, if you choose not to flush your own cartridge, your own yellow cartridge, and we'll get into what you need to do that with, you can go ahead and receive that CLI-8 cartridge from Precision Colors and swap your yellow chip onto this cartridge. This cartridge will have been flushed and modified ready for you to refill. That's all you have to really do. You do not have to flush the other seven colors. Okay. In fact, the first round, roll them until they're almost empty. You can, you can do that. It's afterwards that you need to practice your refilling tactics a little bit differently. Okay. So yellow cartridge must be flushed. You cannot add precision colors or any other dye yellow ink made for the Pro 100 onto an unflushed original OEM cartridge, yellow. The other colors, no problem, you can. Well, I still insist on flushing them. Okay, fine, if you insist on flushing them, then you need to do this. You need to flush them with Windex, with ammonia. Go to your local supermarket here in the USA, we have it everywhere. I know that in other countries, there's no such item available. Sorry, what can I tell you? Find a window cleaner that's clear blue and has ammonia in it. I don't care what the brand is, as long as it's clear and has ammonia in it, it will push out all of that ink right out of those fibers. This is a magenta, photo magenta cartridge that was just simply flushed with water instead of using Windex before exposing that cartridge to water. Windex first and then water. This cartridge would have been snow white. Okay. Right now it has a tint all over those fibers. All of those fibers have a residue of the original ink. Will it cause a problem? Only if it was yellow. Okay. Only if it was yellow. The other colors do not have that problem. So if this doesn't bother you, it bothers me. I want a nice pristine cartridge like this one. I want to start with a snow white cartridge. If this does not bother you, then don't worry about it. Flush them with water and then proceed. After you dry them properly, this takes days. Okay, so you can't do that 
on existing cartridges that you're actually running with. You have to have two sets. We'll get into that later. So you see how I'm showing you that there is no exact way to do this. If you choose to flush and you want your sponges to become white, then use Windex first, followed by water. If you don't care about your sponges not being white, then just use water, let it dry, of course, and then refill them. There will be no reaction unless that cartridge is yellow. Yellow, yellow, yellow is the only one that will react and requires flushing, okay? Now, this cartridge right here is unmodified. I got a bag full of these. It's a gray cartridge. What do I need to do to this? Well, it's been sitting around with no cover on the port, so it is totally dried inside. That ink is crusty and dried. I can flush it out with water, sure, but that sponge is going to be dark gray. It's not going to become clean, okay? And if you're a stickler for purity, then you have to flush this with Windex. So you see, two different answers to the question. It just depends what you want. If you want a white sponge, Windex followed by water. If you don't care about the sponge color, then water and, you know, let it dry. You all have to let them dry anyway, regardless of what technique you use. So, how to avoid all of this headache? I mean, why should I bother with all of this work? It just seems like a lot of work. It'll take you days unless you have a drying oven that you can put your cartridges in and let them slowly dry at a low temperature, like 100 degrees, until they weigh 13.6 grams. Bare like this with no plug in them, 13.6 grams each. Well, why bother with all of that when you can just get a set already pre-modified, already beautifully flushed, and ready to be used and supply with the best clips in the market, these right here. These attach like so. Remember the cartridge clips that you remove when you install your printer? You probably threw those out, didn't you? This is the most secure way to store a cartridge, okay? Boom. And so, go to my description. There is an eBay store link there where you will be able to buy sets of eight CLI-42 cartridges pre-modified ready to be refilled and with these clips and with the best plugs in the business and then all you have to do is refill those with precision color inks line them up fill them up and put them aside until you need to install them in your printer you can install them one by one as each one of your original oem cartridges whoops original oem cartridges goes empty take it out and replace it with a precision colors filled cartridge. Now, what about once I run out of all my original OEM cartridges? Well, at this point, if you're brave, you can go ahead and process those cartridges yourself because you now have the already pre-modified cartridges refilled with precision colors inks in your printer. Oh, guess what? You, you haven't even seen a difference in color rendition. Trust me. If you're doing things correctly, you will not see a difference between OEM and your new inks from Precision Colors. You don't believe me? Watch my video, okay? If you're getting different colors, you're doing something wrong, I guarantee you, okay? It's not the inks. Now, once you get all of your original OEM cartridges modified and flushed and dried, oh, by the way, just buy another set, okay? Just buy another set. In fact, you can send them your empties, by the way, and he will process them for a small fee for you, okay? It doesn't get better than that, okay? Really, it doesn't. So here's the practice that you must adhere to from now on, okay? Remember, when you were working with your OEM inks, you want to use as much of that ink as possible. So you're going to replace them one at a time, but now you have the luxury of a full set of Precision Colors refilled cartridges 
in a second set of precision colors filled cartridges. Here's what you do from now on, okay? Because you may have noticed that every time you change one cartridge, you hear all those noises that printer is making. It is sucking ink out of all eight cartridges. It's a purge cycle. It needs to purge the printhead. Make sure there's no air in there while your cartridge was removed. You have severed that connection, okay, between the cartridge and the port and the printhead. So now air can get in. So you need to purge that out. It runs that every time you exchange one cartridge. That's eight cartridges being slowly emptied every time you change one cartridge. Also, as you print, cartridge levels will be vastly different, okay? And when you replace one that was almost empty or low, whatever you choose to do, and it runs that purge cycle, the very next one that was almost empty or low may become empty, and you gotta replace that one. You create this, this ridiculous domino effect that all you're doing is replacing cartridges every week or so. It should be every two months or so instead of every week or so. So you replace a complete set. When one of them is low, replace that whole set. Don't worry about it. You'll have these clips. Clip all your eight cartridges, put them aside, and install that other set that's already full and reset. You're starting from new again. Everything is full. Sure, it'll run one purge cycle, but only once about every two months, okay? Instead of every few days, really. Believe me, I, I've been there, done that, okay? So I developed this system so that it prevents all of these unnecessary purge cycles that take place every time you replace one cartridge. We are refilling, we are resetting at will. So we have the luxury to remove not only that low one, but all of the other ones that are partially full. Take them out, start fresh. Every time you change one cartridge, the other cartridges lose some ink. And that ink gets stored inside your printer in your waste ink pads. And this is going to eventually make your printer die. Okay? It's going to render it useless. You want to delay that inevitable condition. It will happen but you want to delay it as much as possible by replacing complete cartridges with fully filled new set of cartridges. Basically, when I say new, it's your other set. You know what I mean? You will only have one so-called purge cycle like every two months or so because it will take that long from one cartridge to reach low. Wow, you're reducing your waste ink production and this is not counting the uh, cleaning cycles that Canon printers do on their own. This is, a, this is something else. So you want to reduce that by a factor of eight. Because instead of one every time you change one of those eight cartridges, that's eight times, okay? You're only changing the whole set at once. I know it's confusing, but trust me, this works. So you have to, any way, shape, or form, you have to... Set yourself up with two complete sets of cartridges that have been modified and flushed if you want them that way, okay? If you buy them from Rick Johnson, that's the guy on eBay, he will provide you with pristine cartridges. 60 bucks a set, that's it. And he also has other supplies as well. And he might even have yellow cartridges to sell you if you choose not to flush and do your own cartridges. Either way, again, there's many ways to approach this. There is not one single concise answer to this question, this situation. Like, what do I do? Do I flush? Do I not flush? Well, yeah and, and no. It depends. So I've given you all of the options. Just choose the one that's easiest for you. For me, it's a no-brainer. Just buy two sets of cartridges and then send them yours. And he will modify them for you. Okay, that's it. You don't have to deal with any of this stuff. I hope you I hope you take this home. This is good advice, I think. All right. The next video we're going to talk about something interesting. It'll be a little bit of a, of a history lesson. How did we develop the refilling techniques for these cartridges? All of these types of sponge
cartridges that Canon printers use. And we'll, co we'll go as far back as the days when cartridges did not have chips to the present day. And we're going to stick to this family of cartridges here. So that should be really interesting for you guys to watch. Thank you so much. Don't forget to subscribe, share, and like. As always, happy printing, everybody. Do this right. Bye-bye, everyone.